So hi, I'm Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with NDSU Agriculture Communication, and this is part one of a two-part webinar series uh, in, as an introduction to AgCMS. AgCMS stands for Ag Content Management System. A content management system is just an easy way for people to uh, create web content. The AgCMS uh, is one of two content management systems that is available uh, here at North Dakota State University. NDSU has its own CMS. It's just called the NDSU CMS, and it's available through NDSU ITS. Uh, many academic departments use that uh, content management system and, and most of the other departments on campus. Um, we have our own ag CMS, um, which is primarily focused on um, the uh, extension service, uh, including uh, the county sites and, and topic and issue sites, uh, the College of Ag, some, not all, but some of the academic departments in the College of, of Agriculture, Food Systems and Natural Resources um, are in the Ag CMS, and then the Research Extension Centers, um, which um, I think all of their sites are in the Ag Content Management System. So. Um, We'll be talking about the basics of that today and how to get started using that the Ag CMS. Um, anytime during the session, please use the chat pod uh, to ask questions. Uh, you can find that by clicking the little purple tab down in the lower right and uh, uh, post your questions there. So what we're looking at here um, is a page in the Ag CMS. I'm actually going to switch that here to uh, the extension service page. Um, and so there's a, there's a couple of different uh, ways to look at these pages. What we're looking at now is the public view. So this is a site. Uh, a site is um, a collection of folders and I other items that are all assembled together uh, into one, uh, one website with its own navigation, has a separate navigation. Um, in our Ag CMS uh, parlance, we call this a microsite. You don't have to worry about that. It's just it's your. It's like your site, right? So everything that you want to post in this one location uh, on the web is your site. And that location, uh, once it's public facing, has a unique web address, a URL that always starts with our domain, www.ag.ndsu.edu, and then slash whatever. In this case, we're looking at slash extension. Um, if we're looking at a county site, we might be looking at slash Burley County Extension, slash Cass County Extension, slash Pierce County Extension, et cetera. Um, and those are, that's pretty standard for the county sites. If we are looking at a topic or issue site, it might be slash horticulture, slash crops, right? But it's all under www.ag.ndsu.edu um, once it is public facing. There is another way that once we're logged in, you'll see that, that you can uh, not only look at, but edit the information in your site. Um, sometimes we call that the admin side or the back end um, or the logged in view, um, but that has a different URL. And I wanna stress that up front because um, one of the things that we see happen every once in a while is that when you are logged in uh, to Ag CMS and you're making edits and maybe you finish your edits and now you're like, okay, let me go share this uh, with people. Sometimes you will copy the web address in the logged in view and send it to people and then they can't access it because it's a different web address. It's a different URL. It starts with a different domain. So the public side is www.ag.ndsu.edu. The back end is a different URL. Um, you don't have to really worry about what that is. And also, I can't recall it off the top of my head right now, but um, we'll see it once we get into the logged in view. Okay. So, a couple things about general structure. All of the Ag CMS um, follows the same general, what we call a theme, right? And that theme controls, um, you know, the font style, it controls the general layout of things, it controls the background color and the color of the text and those kinds of things. Um, and so most Ag CMS pages look pretty much like this, uh, or very similar um, of what you're seeing now. Up at the very top um, of this page, you'll see 
uh, what we call the header area. So there's a bar up there that brands our site as an NDSU website, and it also has um, some navigation that will lead to more general NDSU things. So someone ended up on your pay, your site or on this extension site, and they were actually uh, looking to apply for admission, or they were, you know, they were a, a prospective student or a current student. Those links are up there to get them to the right, right place. Below that, you're going to see uh, the site name. So in all caps there where it says NDSU Extension Service, that is your site name. And on your site, it's going to be whatever your site name is, right? Um, uh, and so, and then to the right of that, you'll see um, our Google Custom Search. So we use a Google Custom Search to search our domain uh, for information. It searches the whole domain. It doesn't, uh, it's not a site-specific search. Um, but it searches everything that uh, is out there on the web in www.ag.ndsu.edu and a couple of other domains that we have um, as well. Uh, below that, you have the yellow line, and then below that, we have what, we're what we call the breadcrumb trail. This shows people where they are uh, in the site. So uh, you can see it here right now, it says NDSU. If I click that, it would take me back to the NDSU homepage, ndsu.edu. Um, I'm on the NDSU Extension Service homepage right now. If I clicked down into, let's say, About Us, you can see that that breadcrumb trail changes. Now it's showing me that I'm in the on the About Us page inside of the NDSU Extension Service site, uh, which is part of the broader uh, North Dakota State University. So that breadcrumb trail is clickable, and it allows people to see exactly where they are in the site and to navigate uh, back and forth if they want to jump. Uh, back and forth. That is the header. You have no control <laughs> as a site manager over your header. Um, Sonia Fox, myself, Roger Egerberg, which is our really our web technology team uh, in NDSU Ag Communication, uh, we have access to things like uh, the site name. So that can be updated or changed for you. One of us can do that for you. Um, but that's that's really about it. That's that's a pretty standard, unchanging part uh, of the Ag CMS layout. Uh, questions so far? Questions about the header? If you do have questions, jump in the chat to uh, share those. Uh, and again, the chat. If you've just joined, if, I know we've had a lot of people join uh, just in the last couple of minutes. Is under the purple tab in the lower right. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move on, if, but please go ahead, ask questions anytime you have them. All right, so if we look at this, um, uh, everything below the header here, um, you'll see that the the part that hopefully sticks out to you uh, is that big part in the middle. We call that our content area. This is sort of the main uh, priority, the main part of the site. So in this case, when we're looking at the About Us page, uh, the content of the About Us page, whatever's edited and put into that page, appears in the middle there, right? That's the, that's the content area. To the left and to the right, uh, you'll see uh, two portlet columns, okay? The one on the left is, is uh, always there. Uh, it contains our navigation, which is a left-hand navigation that you can see over there. Um, and that is in the left-hand portlet column. Uh, we're going to talk more in depth about portlets in part two of this webinar. Um, but portlets are just little pieces of code that perform specific functions. Um, and they appear uh, in that left-hand column, also in the, in the right-hand column. And they can appear above or below the content as well. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in part two of the webinar. So we have the header. We have the main content area. We have the two portlet columns. And then I'm going to scroll down to the last part of the Ag CMS, and that is the footer. Okay. So um, let me back up and say uh, when we talk about the content area and the portlet columns, you have full control over that as a site manager. If you have access to edit the site, you can do whatever you want with those areas. Um, they're, su they're still subject to the theme that controls the look and feel of the site, but um, you can add portlets, you can remove portlets, you can add different kinds of content. That's, that is the part of the site that you control. 
Okay, going down to the footer at the very bottom of this, you'll see a few things. One is our Creative Commons license that we use for all NDSU extension uh, information that automatically appears on all items in uh, in Ag CMS as part of the footer. Um, you'll see a little bar here uh, promoting that we are a student-focused land-grant research university. When I say we, that's uh, North Dakota State University. Um, Another bar that leads to some more NDSU resources, including the campus map, employment, the directory, et cetera, you'll see that. And then down at the very bottom, uh, you'll see some contact information, okay? So uh, those first three items, the Creative Commons and the two bars, those are unchanging. Uh, I don't have control over them. They're, they're part of our theme. Um, the contact information down in the lower left, um, that, I do have control over. You don't, but uh, if you need that changed, you can contact me, Sonia, Roger Egerberg, and um, we can move from there. All right, Marissa's saying she lost sound. Can anyone else hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay. All right, thanks everybody for confirming that. I just wanted to get that uh, message to Marissa so she knows that it's something on her end. All right, um, so that's the footer. Questions about the content area, portlet columns, header, footer, that's the general layout. Okay, post them in the chat uh, if you have questions. All right, I did wanna bring this up don't worry about the stuff down at the bottom. What we're focused on here is the stuff up in the center here. This is the mobile view of the same site we are looking at, right? So let me go back to the homepage here so we can do an apples to apples comparison. All right. What looks like this on a desktop computer looks like this on mobile. Okay. Is everybody seeing the difference there? That uh, is important. All right, so let me talk a little bit about the mobile um, the mobile view because more and more people are viewing our, our sites on mobile uh, every day. It increases the percentage of, of mobile visitors as opposed to desktop visitors. Um, and so what we've decided to stress on mobile is uh, the content area. So the, when we looked here, we saw the... Um, content here that starts NDSU extension service, state specialist, right? That's the top of the content area in the middle. And we go to the mobile view, we get that exact uh, same thing, okay? Um, I'm having a little bit trouble getting to my tab that has the, the mobile view in it. It's not, you guys can see it, but it's not loading in a place where I can scroll in it. So a um, couple things to note about this, hopefully I'll be able to scroll in it shortly here. Um, couple of things to note about this. Uh, where are Where is the navigation? Okay, the navigation is up at the top uh, in what we call a hamburger menu, those little three lines there. Um, if, if you, I would click on that or in this case, or if someone would touch that on their phone, uh, they, that would expand and they would get the left-hand navigation. Okay, um, the other thing that we don't see that we see in the desktop view are the portlet columns. Where are the portlet columns? They are at the bottom. Okay, so our, what we've said with our mobile theme is the most important information on your website is what's in the content area. It's not what's in the navigation. It's not what's in the portlet columns. It's what's in the content area, that middle part of the site that you see uh, right here. Okay, questions about that? All right, well, let's go ahead and move on because we, we have a lot to uh, get to. So logging into Ag CMS. Um, Ag CMS uh, is organized into four different instances. We'll take a look at them here as I open up this, this site. The site we're looking at now is www.ag.ndsu.edu slash agcms, right? And this is a page that um, 
we originally were using for news and information about XCMS as well as logins. Now the prim primary use is just logins. This is where you go to log in. And I would recommend uh, if you're going to bookmark anything, bookmark this site uh, because the logins will always be here. We've had at least one instance in the last eight years where uh, the uh, URL to log in, uh, the actual where the actual login page uh, exists, changed right because of some changes we've made on the back end and that means then if you had that page bookmarked now that's that's broken okay so if you have this page bookmarked we will keep those links to the logins um, uh, active and and updated all right so you'll find the logins here over on the on the right hand side you'll see there are four instances uh, one for academic sites county extension sites topic and other sites and the REC sites um, that is important uh, for those of you who might be managing sites on, on two different instances because the username uh, and login database is different for each instance, right? So you, so if you want to edit a county page, we create an Ag CMS account for you on the county extension instance. But if you also want access to the program planning site uh, for extension, that's on topic and other sites instance. So then we create another uh, account for you on that instance. We give you the same username on both instances and you can set the password the same. So once once those are created, it's it's like it doesn't really matter that you have two separate accounts, but they are separate. Um, and it's uh, it's good to remember that. So when you're logging in, you want to come to this page and choose the instance that you want to log into based on what site you are going to edit, right? So. Uh, and so knowing which instance your site is on is important uh, as well. So let's go ahead and log in. I'm going to log into a um, into a county sites page. I might have to um, kill my uh, Firefox and restart it here because I'm having trouble getting into and actually seeing where I can navigate. Here we go. All right, now I've gotten a place where I can actually work this. Okay, so let's log into county extension sites, or I'm going to log into county extension sites. So I do that just by clicking here. There we go. And then putting in my login name. For most of you, uh, the vast majority of you, it's going to be first initial last name. That's our, that is our standard for setting usernames. Uh, mine is not that it's just my first name uh, if you had a if we had an issue where we uh, had more than one person with the same first initial and last name then your your login might be a little bit different but uh, the standard is first initial last name and then whatever you set your password to when we created your account and then you can go ahead and log in and I obviously mistyped my login There we go. So this is the logged in view. I'm now logged into the Ag CMS. So if a couple of things that I mentioned before, if you look up at the top, it's a different URL. It's not ag.ndsu.edu, it's ext.nodac.edu. Um, so if I were to share this, this URL with somebody, they would not be able to access it without an Ag CMS login. So that's different than your public URL, which starts with www.ag.ndsu.edu. Next step is to go ahead and find the site that you want to edit. Um, the sites are organized in alphabetical order, uh, so you can see them there. You'll notice that some of these sites for me in the view that I'm sharing with you are red. Uh, that's an indication that those sites are not published. Um, the home folder of those sites are not published. OK, so uh, the only way to have a live site that's out uh, to the public is to have it published um, and then for it to go live. And that's something that we do on our end here uh, in web services. So I'm going to go ahead and, and access this model county extension site that I'll be using just by clicking on it. All right. When you log in you're probably not going to see this model county extension site because you don't have access to it. The only way that you can see private sites when you're logged in is if you have access to them. Uh, you'll be able to see all these other uh, sites because they're published. But unless you have 
permission to edit them, you won't be able to edit them. You'll be able to view them, but not edit them. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I clicked in the wrong thing here. I'm going to go ahead and click into here and just cover a few of the things um, that you're going to see here. So uh, if we look on the left, you'll see the left-hand navigation. Again, all of those items are red. That's an indication that they are private. Private is the state that anything new in Egg CMS has, right? Whenever you create something new, it starts out as private uh, with the exception of images and files. Um, but everything else, pages, folders, all the other item types start out as private. Um, and then you have to publish them if you want the, uh, people to have access, uh, view access to them. Well, I tell you what, I'm having just a, a heck of a time here with my screen loading. It's very weird that you can see your, I can see the screen in Collaborate, but I can't see it actually in my browser. So. Um, the other thing that you'll notice, which is different than the public site, is that you have some options, right? Down at the bottom left of the, the left-hand portlet column, uh, you have a manage portlets link. Uh, up at the top here, you have add, edit, or remove a portlet above the content. And then you also have this green bar that, that only displays if you're logged in and you have access uh, to edit the site. And what this bar allows you to do is, uh, in this case, this is a folder, so it would allow me to view the contents of the folder. Uh, we're on the View tab now. Um, I could go ahead and edit it, or I could adjust the sharing, and the sharing is the, the permissions that somebody has uh, to go ahead and edit this particular item, okay? Questions so far? Please go ahead and put them in the chat. I hope my chat's updating. Um, over on the far right of this green bar, you'll see some other options that you have, including actions. That includes things like being able to cut, copy, delete, or rename this particular item. Uh, you'll see, uh, in this case, you'll see the display options. And display options give you different ways uh, to display uh, a piece of content, especially a folder or a collection. Um, you'll see the add new link. This is how you add new content and, you, and you'll see the list of different kinds of item types there. We can talk about that later. And then the last thing you'll he see here is the state. And that tells you that this is private and also allows you if you have the, the requisite uh, permissions to go ahead and publish that. Okay. We'll talk more about that once we get some content created. Now the contents tab is important because uh, it, a lot of times you have a scenario like we have here, which is we are actually uh, looking at a page here, um, but that page is the default view of the folder, right? So it's operating as the home page for this particular folder, all right? So uh, in order to see the contents of this home folder, we need to click the contents tab. All right, because otherwise we just keep seeing this home page, this display page. So I'm going to go ahead and click this contents tab and we'll take a look at what's actually in this folder. Um, so you'll see a lot of the stuff that you see in the left hand navigation, but not all of it. And that's because some of these items uh, have been marked as exclude from navigation, including this images folder. Uh, this Im your images folder should be excluded you know, marked exclude from navigation. Um, this is because it's a place to store your images where uh, you don't necessarily want people to access them directly. You want to insert them into pages and other item types. Um, so you'll see that those are excluded from navigation, so they don't appear over here. Um, so the only way to see this, this whole list with even those things that are excluded from navigation is through uh, the contents tab. All right, I think I've covered what I wanted to cover there. So let's go ahead and start uh, creating some items. So I'm going to go back to uh, the home page here. Hopefully that allows, it allows me to do that. Great. Um, and I'm going to add something new. Now, whenever you add something new, 
you want to create it in the space that the most efficient way is to create it in the space where you want it to to live where you want it to exist right so if i create something at this level of the site it's going to be in what we call my home or root folder uh for the site that that folder where we just looked at the contents for right um and it's going to appear if if i allow it to it's going to appear in the navigation right at this level right now uh, and it will appear at the bottom. New stuff always goes on the bottom. That's the default in Ag CMS. But if I wanted that to live somewhere else, let's say in this 4-H folder, before I went ahead and created anything, I'd want to click into that folder, right, and create it in that folder. So just like you're working in Windows, right? If you want to create uh, a document in your My Documents folder, you go uh, into My Documents and create it. If you want to create it uh, in a subfolder, you'd go into a subfolder, you know, and save it there initially. So once you are in the space where you where you want to um, to create your item, then you'd go ahead and click this Add New button and choose your uh, item that you want to create. And in this case, we're going to create a folder. So when do you create a folder? Uh, you create a folder when you anticipate that there are going to be multiple items that you're going to want to store underneath here. That's the only reason to have a folder um, is to organize them. And it organizes them in a couple of ways. It organizes them on the back end for you so you can find things easily. Um, but it also organizes them in the left-hand navigation. And uh, we'll see how that works uh, as we create this folder. So. Uh, the folder is really a very simple item type. All that's required is a title. Once you put the name of the folder in, you can save that and it's going to appear in operate, um, you know, as you would expect it to. There are other options that you can add, including a description. That is an option on all uh, content items. Your description shows up underneath your item title. We'll go ahead and put a description in there, even though that's not required. And at this point, I could go ahead and save uh, and go forward. But I'm going to talk about these other tabs here briefly, uh, starting with categorization. So categorization allows you to add tags uh, to uh, a particular item. So tags are like keywords, right? And you'll see a list of existing tags on this uh, county sites instance of Ag CMS right here that I could choose from. So I could say, you know what, this this folder has to do with birds uh, or Bismarck, and I could go ahead and add those tags. If there was a tag I wanted to add that did not apply here, I could type it in uh, over over here where it says create and apply new tags. Okay, and it could be multiple words. Um, it's one tag per line if you're if you're adding them down in that area. Okay, so that's categorization. Um, the dates tab here allow you to do a couple of things. One is you could go ahead and set a publishing date for the future. So I might be creating this right now, uh, but I don't want it to be available or live uh, until a month from now. So if I set a publishing date a month from now, uh, I could go ahead and um, and set that. Right, uh, and you you get it once I fi finish that out and save that, and then in a month things will go live. Uh, so Lisa is asking, tags help when someone is searching for information on Google or just in our site. Well, our our site search is Google. Tags uh, do have some effect, not as great an effect as they used to, um, so it's not critical. The more common issue where we see tags used uh, in Ag CMS now is in creating collections. And we're not scheduled to talk about collections today, but collections are sort of like saved searches. Um, and so using tags is an easy way to pull information from multiple folders or from multiple sites and pull them all together in one place. So that's the more common use of tags. Um, it doesn't hurt to add tags uh, you know, to your items. Um, it helps Google search a little bit, 
but it also, you know, gets you in a place where maybe sometime in the future you do want to create a collection. You know, we realize that, oh, geez, we've been storing some stuff in 4-H and so about livestock judging, but there's also some stuff that we've been storing in our livestock folder. I wish we could pull that together. Well, if you've tagged everything 4-H judging or livestock judging uh, in advance, then you could use a collection to pull those two things, all those things together from the two folders into a collection. So that's the more common use of tags, but they do have an effect on, on Google search as well. Um, so the publishing date, that's set a published date for the future. And then the expiration date, um, that uh, uh, will cause that item to be marked expired um, at a certain point, okay? So people can still uh, access it, but it's going to say this is expired, right? Um, and it will also allow you to, um, to go back and find your expired items and either delete them or unpublish them, uh, which is called retract, okay? Uh, the creators tab, not much to worry about here. This is just who, um, if I can get to it, here we go. This is just who created this item. That's the egg CMS username. You could add contributors there, but it, it really is not, uh, something that we run into. The rights, you don't want to touch the rights because everything's covered under our Creative Commons copyright, which you can see there down at the bottom of every page. And then the last tab is the settings tab. And there are a few things here that you'll see. Um, one is allow comments. Uh, we don't have our commenting plugin uh, built into every instance of Ag CMS, and not I can't think of any site that allow, that is allowing comments right now. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, the one that is really uh, critical is the exclude from navigation. So if you're creating a folder that you don't want to appear in the left-hand side or an item that you don't want to appear in the left-hand side, you would click this exclude from navigation and it would not appear in the navigation. And then the last one there, enable next previous navigation, that allows uh, a folder to operate like uh, sort of like a slideshow, right? Like where you can click an arrow and go to the next item. So if I had a folder full of pictures, I might enable next previous navigation to allow people to scroll through each picture in the folder. So questions about any of that? I know we're plowing through this fast, but please go ahead and put those in the chat if you have any questions at all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we're gonna see that folder. Uh, that I just created appear over here in the left-hand navigation because I didn't exclude it. It's at the bottom because that's how XMS works. The newest stuff goes at the bottom. And that and it is red because it is marked private. That's the initial state of all item types except for images and files. And you can see here I'm in the view of this folder. Um, so this is what it would look like if I published it. You can see the title here. This byline, which does not show to the public, this is in logged in view only. There's this link here for adding portlets. Of course, that does not appear to the public at either. But the description, this is a folder. Folder People would see that if it was published. And there are currently no items in this folder. They would see that as well if it was published, along with the tags that I added. So down here in the lower uh, right-hand side, that's where the tags are. You can see Bismarck, test page, and bird. Those are the tags that I added, okay? So we've got a folder, now let's put some stuff in it. So we're gonna start by creating uh, a page. So again, I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm creating this page where I want it to live. So I'm in the test folder, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and create the page. I don't wanna jump out to the root or jump into one of these other folders and create the page if I want it to be in the test folder. So Add new, once again, that's what we're looking for up in the top right. And now we're gonna pick a different kind of item. We're gonna pick a page. And a page is just a typical web page. It's, a, it's where you can take text, images, and hyperlinks and mix them all together uh, to, make, to make something. All right, so we start by giving it a title. We have this summary area here. This is just like the description we had for the folders. So there's my summary. Again, that's optional. Um, only the title is required. Um, and then we have this body text area down here. 
Uh, this includes our what you see is what you get editor. Um, so to create content in here, we can just click into that content box and that's important to be clicked into there uh, before you click any of these style buttons or anything else up here. Um, so I go ahead and click in there and then we start adding some, some text. Okay, so we've got some, some text in here and now I can uh, apply some, uh, some formatting to it, some limited formatting to it uh, by highlighting it and then uh, using some of these buttons up here. So you'll see the drop down box. These are for the main kinds of, um, of styles that we have. Uh, the normal paragraph, that's what you start as, as a normal paragraph, but there's a heading and a subheading. Those are probably the two most important. Um, they can help you uh, break up your site uh, into uh, scannable chunks, right? Um, so people can really scan through there and just read the headings and subheadings and decide which part they want to actually read. They're also important for accessibility for people who are using screen readers. Um, they can use headings and subheadings uh, so that their screen reader doesn't have to read the whole page. They can choose a heading or a subheading and just have the screen reader read that part. So important for accessibility for the visually impaired as well. Um, so those are the main style types. Um, you also have some other things that you can add here, including bold, italics, subscript, doesn't come up very often, uh, not a lot of mathematical for formulas or footnotes in our content, um, and then superscripts uh, as well. Again, something that doesn't come up very, very often. So that's the stuff that you can do with the text. Um, then you'll also have uh, some paragraph layout things. So things start left justified. Uh, you can center them, right? You can right justify them. Uh, you can full justify them, okay? Next, you'll see uh, a couple of lists, bulleted list or unnumbered lists and uh, numbered list or ordered lists. Um, and, and the important thing to, to remember with these is to go ahead and get your text in there first before you, uh, before you apply that, right? I, it, it might work if you apply uh, the, the uh, bulleted list or, or numbered list before you type, but it, it causes problems. So uh, if I highlight this item and then apply a bulleted list, uh, then I can go ahead and once I hit enter, and then, then you see I'm in a bulleted list here. So I can go ahead and, and fill that out. Um, if I want to uh, have sub bullets for this, um, I can go ahead and just uh, indent those using the indent tool here. See if I can get in the right spot so that happens. There we go. Um, and that is this button right here with the little blue arrow. If I want to undo that, I can outdent it and get in the right spot here. And there we go. And that's the little blue arrow uh, to the right. And I know that's this is all really hard to see on my screen, uh, but once you get into there into the uh, editor, you'll be able to see that stuff a little bit better. Okay. So those are the main things that we can do with text, right? So we could we could take this first word and let's make that a heading by highlighting it, choosing heading, right? And then we have some text there. And then maybe we want to take this word and make it a subheading, again, by highlighting it and choosing subheading. There we go. Um, making things bold, italicized, etc. Okay. Questions about the WYSIWYG editor, the what you see is what you get editor. We didn't go through all the buttons. We'll go through some of those here as we move on to these other items. Okay, post your questions in the chat. Um, just like the, the folder, we have categorization, we could add tags, we have dates, we could set a publishing date, uh, we have the settings, so we could exclude this from navigation if we wanted to. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that then. Important to hit save.
um, if you don't want to lose your stuff. And you'll see our page is, is in the navigation. It's underneath the test folder because that's where we created it. And you can see it's indented here. Right? If I go back up to the root folder, uh, in order to see that page, I'd have to click on the folder that it is in. So I'd click test. And then the navigation expands, and there's the page, right? And then also when I click on test here, the default view for a folder shows us that this uh, this page is in the test folder, and I could click on it from there as well. OK? All right. So images and links. So these are a little bit different. Um, than uh, then pages or, or other item types. I think, like I've said before, uh, one way that they're different is when you upload them, they're already published. They don't have a state. They're just available. Um, so let's start with getting, uh, getting our images uploaded. And that is the first step. Um, there's a way to get an image uploaded while you're inserting it. Um, but I think it's a little bit backwards, right? You should think about what image do I want to put in my page and get that uploaded first. So let's do that. So um, we're going to go ahead and upload our images into the images folder on this site. And uh, let me show you why. Well, I'll just tell you why. The reason is we don't want them to show up in the navigation. OK, it would be weird to see the image names, especially if you're not good about naming your image. You know, it's named IMG4971, and it's showing up in the navigation. That's going to confuse people. So that's why on uh, egg CMS sites, uh, when we create them, we give you an images folder that's already uh, excluded from the navigation. So to get there, I'm, I'm going to my home folder. I can't see everything that's in this home folder because of this default page that's being displayed here. So I have to click the Contents tab and then go into the images folder, all right? We have some images here um, already, but if I had something new that I wanted to add, I would just go ahead and click the Add New button and then choose the item type image. Jump in here, all right? So one of the things that's a little bit different about this is that it doesn't require a title. There's an option of adding a title, but it doesn't require it. Uh, all that's required really is for you to browse and find the image uh, on your computer and then go ahead and save it to get it uploaded. Um, but I do recommend uh, putting a title in just to help you find stuff, right? If you have a bunch of images in that folder with uh, cryptic file names, it's going to be harder for you to find the one that you're looking for. So let's start by going ahead and finding an image uh, on my site. Now you're not seeing this because I shared my application instead of sharing my whole uh, desktop. Um, but when you click that browse button, you're gonna get a little pop-up just like you would expect to get if you were uploading an image anywhere, you know, to Facebook or whatever. You get a little pop-up that allows you to navigate through uh, your computer, you know, and find an image that you want to upload that I'm working on that right now. Okay. So you would select that image that you want to upload one at a time. You can't select multiple images in this way. Uh, and then you, you'd click the open button and you can see down here where under my browse button, the file name of that image has shown up there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add a title. So I know what I'm looking at. Okay, just like with the other items, we could add tags to this. We could, uh, the dates is irrelevant because it's gonna be published already. Uh, we could go to the settings and exclude it from the navigation, but we don't need to do that because we're putting it in a folder that's already excluded from the navigation. And then I go ahead and save this. And there's my image, okay? And that's what you'll see, you'll see it shows up in the navigation here. Now, if you're wondering, it's like you said, this isn't going to show in the navigation, but I see it over there in the navigation. That's because we're logged in and we're clicked into that folder, right? So once you're in a folder, it's going to show you the navigation, um, you know, just to show you where you're at. But the public wouldn't be able to get at this because it's excluded from the navigation. So they would never end up here like we are now. 
All right, so we've got our image uploaded. Let's go ahead and insert it into our page. So to find our page, it's in the test folder. So I'm gonna click that here in the left-hand navigation. I'm gonna click on my page. I can do that either in the left-hand navigation or here in the uh, content area where it's displayed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click the edit tab up here to make changes uh, in my page. All right, so to add an image, first we wanna put our cursor in the page at the point where we want that image to appear. All right, so I'm gonna create a new line here and uh, so that I have a place to insert that image. And now I'm gonna click the insert image button. That's this little tree guy right here. We click him and here's our pop-up. And the first option is to insert an image that is internal. Internal means it is on your site, okay? So uh, we need to go ahead and find that. It's telling us there are no images in the test folder. Okay, we know that. So that means we have to back up. We have to go ahead and go to home uh, and search for our images folder, or we could search the site, right? So we know that I add this word theater in my title. Um, so that allows me to search for it and find it here, okay? If you're not using the search, then you can click up in the breadcrumb trail back up, find the folder where your image is, all right, and then go ahead and select it. So if you look on the right-hand side of this window, which I'm gonna try and make a little bit bigger, okay, um, you'll see that the image has been selected there. There's the title of the image. There's an option here for description. Description is important in this sense because uh, it is what gets read by a screen reader if someone who's visually impaired is uh, comes across this image, okay? So uh, the, these are important. Um, so I could, I've got a pretty descriptive title, so I could just use that, that same thing in this case uh, in the description. There you go. All right, there's a button here to add a caption. Uh, if I click that, that caption is going to be whatever is in the description, all right? Um, so if you check that, then there's gonna, it's gonna appear underneath the image. Uh, below that, you can see that there's a place to select uh, the alignment of the photo. So inline means it's going to take up its own row, its own paragraph, nothing to the left of it, nothing to the right of it. You can align it with text. You can align it to the left of text or to, and that's not showing up for you guys, but I'll, if I select it, maybe it will, to the left of text or to the right of text. The one caveat to that is that um, think mobile first, right? Uh, aligning an image to left or right of text it, on a mobile device means nothing. There's no room to do it. So it ends up in line usually anyway. Okay, so uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in line. And then the next item here is uh, the size of the image. When you upload to Egg CMS, it creates, when you upload an image to Egg CMS, it creates multiple sizes for you to choose from. And that's a way of saving uh, space on Egg CMS, uh, not really on Egg CMS, but saving uh, file size in terms of uh, bandwidth that's required to download that image. And again, think mobile, right? Everybody, we might think, oh, lots of people have broadband now in their homes or, or their offices, but on a mobile device, you might be on 4G, you might want to be saving some of that data. So uh, if we only want this to display at a smaller size, uh, we probably don't want to upload it at the original size that you see there of 1920 pixels by 1271 pixels. Um, it's really too big for the content area anyway. So I'm going to, you can't see these, but there are about seven different sizes, large, preview, mini, thumb, and they have the, the pixel size uh, available for you to get an idea of how big they are as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in at the preview size, which is the, you can see there, the 400 pixel size. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, to upload or to insert that image. And here that image is in my page. If I wanna resize it beyond this, I could click on it and you can see those little, uh, squares at the corners. 
if I grab one on the corner here, I could make it smaller. Now I would never make it bigger, right? If I upload it at 400, I don't want to stretch it out. That's going to distort the photo, but I could go ahead and make it smaller, make the pixels go closer together. Uh, if I want it bigger than 400, then I should select a larger size when I, when I insert the image. Okay. A couple of things that I want to uh, definitely squeeze in here before we move on to files. I didn't talk about links, and this is a good time to, as good a time as any to talk about them. So I mentioned that pages are, are a mix of text and images and hyperlinks. How do you do hyperlinks? It's pretty easy. Uh, you could either select some text or you could select an image if you want that to be linked. And then go ahead and click this little uh, three link chain up here. That is our insert link button. And you'll see you get this dialog box again. Again, it starts uh, on internal. So if you want to link to something that already exists in your site, you can navigate to it just like we did before. Let's say I want to make this a link to the 4-H and Youth page. Um, I go ahead and select that and say OK. And you should be able to see that that text is a different color now that is hyperlinked and is going to lead to the 4-H and Youth page. If I want to link to somewhere else, let's say I highlight some text and uh, create a link here, if I can get things working. There we go. Um, if it's if I want to link somewhere else uh, on the web, I would make that an external link. External links are anything that are not in your site. So even if you're uh, linking to the NDSU extension page or another county's page or another topic area, uh, you'd use an external link. And then here's where you can just put in the URL or cut and paste it and then click OK. And now we've got an external link. You can tell it's an external link because it has that little icon, a little square with an arrow going out of it. That tells the public that this is an external link, that we're, I'm taking you somewhere else uh, when you click on this link. Okay, So those are the hyperlinks. So let's go ahead and, and save this now. Okay, And here is our uh, image. Here's our external link uh, right here. And here is our uh, internal link. All right. So if I click the internal link, here we go to the 4-H page. If I click the external link, that's going to take us to the URL that I put in. OK. Any questions about any of that? Go ahead and put them in the chat. I've got six minutes to talk about files. Uh, shouldn't take that long. Files are very similar to images. They work in the, in the same way. When we talk about files, these are anything that's not an image. Uh, so image files are JPEGs, JPGs, uh, GIFs or GIFs, depending on what side of the argument you're on. Those are GIFs. And then also PNGs. Um, so those are the file types that uh, are accepted on AG CMS and on the web, right? JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, OK? So when we talk about other types of files, we're talking about things that are not image files. Um, so those are PDFs, sometimes maybe Word documents, um, uh, maybe even an Excel spreadsheet. But mostly, we deal with, with PDFs when we're talking about uh, files. So let's go ahead and, and uh, add a file. And I'm going to go into the Contents tab again. Um, now, I don't really want my file in the Images folder. But I want it to work like an image. I probably don't want it in my left-hand navigation. So I'm going to create a new folder. I think I got that as a folder. Yeah, great. And maybe you could call it PDFs. You could call it documents. You could call it files, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to go to the settings and exclude it from the navigation. So now I have a situation like I do with my images folder where it's not in the navigation, but I can put stuff here and then I could link to it from other pages. So to add a file in here, I'm going to click add new and choose the item type file. All right, you see very much like an image, I, the title's not required. I can just browse my computer. Again, I apologize that you can't see this, but it's it's the typical dialog box that you guys are used to seeing when you upload something. It allows you to navigate, you know, on your on your computer and find what you're what you're looking for. Um, find something that's 
okay to put out there. And then uh, once I have my PDF, and you can see it's down here by the browse, I could just save it at this point and upload it. Uh, if it doesn't have a real descriptive name, I might want to put a title on it so that I know what this is. And then go ahead and save that, and that will upload the PDF, and there it is. Okay. Again, just like images, there is no state. It is automatically published. You don't. It's not private or published. You don't have to worry about changing the state. It is. It is automatically published. So now I've got this PDF out here. What would I do with it? Typically, we would see that used as a link in a page. So if I go back to my page here and edit. I can create an internal link like I did before to the 4-H folder. Let's say, let's go ahead and do that here. Okay, so I've got some text. I highlight it, click my insert link button. This is an internal link because it's something that's on our, our site. I could search for it or I could go ahead and navigate uh, to the files folder, there we go, and select my file. Uh, really nothing else is, is required here. I click OK, and now I've got a link to that PDF. Okay. So those are the basics uh, of what we're going to cover today. I see Kim's got a question. I'm going to answer that. If you have other questions, uh, go ahead and, and post them into the chat now. Um, I'm going to uh, stop the recording. We'll continue our, our conversation as long as you guys still have questions. Um, but if you have to go, thanks. Uh, hope to see you at the next uh, part two webinar where we'll be talking about um, some of the other things, including collections, portlets, and some of the things that we didn't get to today. All right, thanks for joining us. Um, let me know if you have any questions about Ag CMS. You can contact me, Sonia Fox, uh, to help with that.